I want to do research that really adds to humanity's understanding of how the universe works. Basic science, I want to do things that build the foundation upon which other people can then build applications. Dr. Durden's lab focuses on mass spectrometry. We're trying to um, create uh, internal standards to measure different cross-sectional areas so that in the future people can measure the same molecules using one of my samples to uh, reference back to a known sample and kind of use that to correlate different cross-sectional areas without having to measure them themselves. We're working on analytical methods and being able to measure new things and to measure them better is a big deal in science. Most scientific advances over the long term have come about because of improved measurement capabilities and what we're developing is a way to measure molecular size, a new way to do it, that I hope can be, can have some impacts that I haven't even dreamed of. One of the things that I like about this lab is that this lab is really good at um, making you come up with all the different things that you have to do. I like students to be able to go off and explore their own ideas and I will give them suggestions and guidance and hopefully a little bit of motivation. Um, I like to let them do it themselves. In the future people are going to be able to use this research, this information to build on something more. We've convinced the scientific community that the technique works and now we're ready to start applying it to interesting problems. This is a cucurbitril. Um, this is one of our favorite molecules. Uh, cucurbits are pumpkins, and you can see it's pumpkin shaped. And like a pumpkin, it's hollow. And what people envision doing with these, well, one of the things they envision doing is well, putting things inside the pumpkin. Why would you want to do that? Well, for instance, uh, with some drug molecules, when the, the body immediately starts to degrade them, so then you have to give a higher dose, it would be a lot better if you could put those things inside a protective container that enzymes won't degrade, and have that delivered to the site in the body where the, the drug needs to do its thing, and then release it. People imagine applications that that could come out of supramolecular nanotechnology. For instance, you might be able to build a machine that you could inject into someone's bloodstream that would go in and clean out all their arterial plaque, or that would go in and repair all the oxidative damage from disease and restore your cells to youthful condition. It sounds a lot like science fiction, and frankly, right now, most of that is science fiction. But if you wanna go from science fiction to making it science fact, you have to understand the fundamentals of how these things work.